Hello everyone. In my previous videos, I have shown you how to create a simulation box filled with water and subsequently how to do energy minimization, equilibration and finally production run. So in this video, let us try to do some basic analysis with the tools available in Gromax. And I'll show you how to calculate the radial distribution function between the oxygen atoms of water molecules and how to calculate the dipole moment fluctuations and subsequently uh, the dielectric constant of your water box and finally uh, the mean square displacement that is connected to the translational diffusion of water. So here I have already completed a simulation for 5 nanoseconds and you can see there are several files related to that. So this is our trajectory file md uh, 5 nanosecondxtc and it's, it is the TPR file. So we basically need these two files in order to do several analysis. But first of all, uh, we have to create a group containing only the oxygen atoms of water molecules, which is not created by default. So the command to do that is gmx pi make ndx and minus f takes the input and you can input any dot grow file. So I can take it as input and minus o will be the output let's call it index.ndx so the extension should be .ndx and as soon as you hit enter it will show you the default groups which is only water and I want to create another group out of the water that contains only the oxygen atoms so I have to write AOW. OW is the uh, atom name of the oxygen and you can see it has created 216 atoms uh, inside this group so it has just uh, taken the oxygen atoms and you can press enter to see the new group is now listed and press Q and enter to save the file so now you can see there is a file name index.ndx and you have to use this as another input. So let's start with the RDF analysis. The command in Gromax to calculate RDF is gmx mpi rdf and you can always see the options by pressing minus H and enter. It will show you that uh, which flag takes what option so with minus f i have to give a xtc file with minus s i have to give a tpr file and minus n i have to supply an index file and minus o will give you the rdf so and there are other options as well but let's get started with the basic one first so gmx mpi rdf minus f let's give the xtc file minus x let's give the tpr file minus n the index and minus o rdf o w dot xpg press enter and it will uh, ask for inputs so i want to calculate the rdf between oxygen and oxygen so the uh, the reference group the reference selection Will be oxygen so that's group number three so i have to press three enter and it's asking for uh, uh, like the other groups so if the two groups are different say in a uh, system of binary mixture you have two kinds of atoms and you want to calculate the cross rdf that is uh, with respect to atom a and what is the rdf or what is the distribution of the atom type b so then you have to give different uh, IDs 
in the input but here both of them will be number three so here i am pressing number three pressing enter and then it is showing that press ctrl d to end the selection process so you can give multiple groups and it will calculate two different rdfs or three different rdfs but here we need only one so let's press ctrl d and the rdf will be calculated so this process might take several minutes to several hours depending on how long your trajectory is or how closely spaced your trajectory is and it will show you the progress here so we have to wait till the process ends okay so uh, the calculation is going to end and we are left with a file name rdfow.xpg you can plot it with any plotting software of your choice and this is the rdf of your trajectory so you can see this is a tip 3p water model so it's uh, not a good RDF uh, not close to real water because the second peak here is missing so this is a force field issue but uh, the process will be same if you try out with any other model of water okay so let's uh, go to our next analysis which is the dipole moment fluctuations and calculation of dielectric constant so so the command for that is GMX MPI dipoles and again you can just press minus h to see what the what are the options that are going in you can just go through the documentation and find the options you are looking for i'm going with minus f md 5 nanoseconds dot xtc minus s md 5 nanosecond dot tpr and just giving minus o I'm not using any other options, but you are free to use them. So I'm going to dipole pluck dot xvg. Okay, so you can press enter after that, and it will ask you that which group you want to calculate the dipole moment for. And I have only one kind of molecule, so. It doesn't matter whether you give 0, 1, or 2, so let's give 1, and it will again calculate it. The calculation, as you can see, is faster than uh, RDF calculation because it doesn't have to calculate the pair distance. And you can see it has given some value, and also the value of dielectric constant, epsilon, which is calculated from this uh, fluctuation relation. And it's coming out as 103, which is substantially higher than the uh, experimental value, which is close to 78 at room temperature. So again, like tip 3P with a very short trajectory of 5 nanosecond, uh, it's not good estimate of uh, the dielectric behavior. So let's see what files we have so we have dipole fluctuation the average epsilon and dipole dis dis distribution so let's open the file and see what's inside it so it has the x component the y component and the z component and the first column is the time in picosecond unit and this is the total dipole moment in the last column and that goes on for 5000 picosecond the duration of your trajectory and then you have epsilon so let's see what's inside it so you have epsilon and you have this gsk which is carport g factors so that's given in so the time epsilon as it changes with time because epsilon uh, needs a long trajectory so you have to see uh, the plot with time and find out where it converges and you have to go for that value because uh, for a very short time it, it will just fluctuate so you can plot it so you can see whatever the final value is even if it is not uh, close to the reality you can see that initially there are some fluctuations and after say um, sorry after maybe three nanosecond it, it's stable so you have to take this value 
anyway so this is all about the dipole moment fluctuations and dielectric constant and finally i'd like to show you the calculation of msd and diffusion constant so the command for that is gmx mpi msd and again you go for minus h to see what are the options it takes so again the same set of options and i can use the index file to provide only the oxygen atoms uh, with which i want to calculate the msd and there are other options as well but i'm again going to go with the very basic ones so md 5 nanoseconds xdc minus s md 5 nanosecond tpr and minus n index and minus o msd dot x pg it's asking for the group it's three and again it will go on for a few seconds and you will have the output that's mean square displacement against time and it calculates the diffusion sorry it calculates the diffusion constant which is five into 10 to the power minus 5 centimeters square per second the order is correct but the magnitude it should be close to 2.5 so again p3p overestimates the diffusion the translation is faster than real water and basically p3p is not a good model uh, for water dynamics and also the uh, polarization fluctuation that's why we have other models like t4p t5p or even polarizable water models so that's it for this video and there are several other options there are some, several other properties you can calculate with promax so just go through the promax manual and explore as much as you can thanks for watching the video